Hello and welcome back to my studio and today I'm going to be creating a portrait using charcoal. For the supplies I like to use two different charcoal pencils. I use ones by Derwent but you can use any charcoal pencils that you have. I use a light and a dark but if you only have one charcoal pencil that's fine too. And I like to use the pigment that I have from those pencils to create some powder and I add that pigment in with a brush or other tool and I blend out with some blending tools. These are blending stumps. I use one, two or three sizes depending and I also like to use this block. It's a 2B block for the large surface areas and I like to lift highlights with an eraser or two or three. This one's a zero mono Tombow eraser. I also use a kneaded eraser and sometimes a battery operated eraser. To begin, I'm just going to follow my sketch marks and get in the basic proportions of the model's face. I'm using the light charcoal pencil to begin with and I'll use the darker charcoal pencil as I establish some of my darkest darks. But to begin with, we're just getting the facial features in and I'm using a surface of Strathmore mixed media paper, a grey toned paper. This helps us to establish our mid-tones and makes it easier and faster to create a charcoal image. We only have to concentrate on our darkest darks and our lightest lights. So at this early stage, the only important things to consider are just paying particular attention to the proportions as laid down in your sketch and just outlining the areas which we will block in and also refine and blend later on. So to begin with we're just outlining her face, outlining the eyes, the nose, the mouth and the hairline. So use your light pencil to lay down all of this and don't pay particular attention to any of the details now. We don't want to get caught up in any of those details early on, which it is so easy to do, but we're just putting in the very basic core elements. Charcoal is such a great medium to work with. It allows for very loose, expressive, bold mark making and is also wonderful for being able to express moodiness and atmosphere into your work. It's a very forgiving medium and allows you to work out all of your errors as you progress through your artwork. You can easily erase any areas which don't work for you or you can just blur and blend them out and create new marks on top. You may notice that my pencil is not super sharp and this is deliberate because I didn't want to get too consumed by too much perfectionism or too many details. When those areas have been laid down, we can go in with the darker charcoal image and commit to a few more of the areas of her facial features. We already know where the eyes are going to go from our sketch lines and once we're happy with that we can lay down some more darker shadows and start the blending process. For this area now I'm using the larger blending stump and you will notice that I'm using the charcoal that's already in the image to push some of these shadows in. 
This pencil that I'm using for the highlights is a Derwent pastel pencil. It's called Chinese White 72 and is wonderful for creating really bright white highlights. Again, it's not a super fine point on purpose because we don't want to get too wrapped up in details at this point. You can also use the Tombow Mono Eraser, which I'm using right now in the eye area, to lift out unwanted areas of pigment to create more light lights. And one of the things that you can do with charcoal is you can blend in a number of different ways. You can blend with your fingers, with a cotton tip, with a tissue, with blending stumps of various sizes. So it is a very easy area to manipulate and get the achievable results in more ways than one. You can also afford to be more bold with your marks than you otherwise would with other mediums because whatever you don't like can easily be covered up and erased. All of these areas that I'm putting in now will be smoothed out at a later point. So for now what I'm doing is I'm looking at my reference material, squinting with my eyes and paying attention to where the light falls on the model's face. And you'll see that the light source is coming from the left hand side, whereas the light hand, it, right hand side of the image is more in shadow and in darkness. It is also kind of important when you're new to working with charcoal to work really large. That can help you to not concentrate on all the itty bitty areas so that you have lots more surface area to fill. And I'm now blocking in all of the model's hair with the larger block, which is great for covering larger surface areas. And I'm smoothing it all in for now with a Kleenex or tissue paper. I'm also blocking in some of the areas of her cheekbones, the side of her face, and also the main proportions of her dress and also her shoulders. And for this, I'm just using the big blending stump and using the charcoal that I've already laid down to put in some of those dark shadows and then blending out a little bit with either the tissue paper or the largest blending stump. And these areas can be covered really quickly, very early on to establish our very first layer. And then I'm going in quite liberally with the Chinese white pastel pencil to really draw out some of those white highlights, but also to add contouring into her area from the neck down. And you can be really bold with these movements. Don't worry about putting too much pigment down or mark making. It can all be blended in at a later date. And the only time I sharpened my pencil was when I wanted to get more detail in at the later stage when I worked on her eyes and her lips. But at no point did I actually use the finer blending stumps. I just only used the tissue, the cotton and the, uh, the cotton tip and the larger blending stump. We can be a bit more assertive and aggressive with our shadows now because we're putting in the next second and final layer. And on her hair, it's important to add some texture to show some of the unruly nature of the coarseness in her hair to add some more realism.
I've added the reference photo in the description box below along with the tools that I've used to create this image. If you've enjoyed this tutorial, you might consider hitting the like and notification button and subscribing to my channel. Thank you so much for following me along and I look forward to seeing you in the next tutorial.